Thank you, God. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You're freeing people tonight, my Father. You're doing an amazing thing tonight, my Jesus. You're doing an amazing thing in our lives, oh God. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, my God. There's no one like you, Lord. We've, we've blown the shofar of victory. We've, we've said that we've come into the new year. Lord, Father, we, we are ready for you. We're, we're ready for the things that you want to do, oh God. We bless you, we honor you, we thank you, we give ourselves over as living sacrifices unto you. For you to do with what you want, my God. Fill us again, fill us again, fill us again, we're desperate for a revival. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that there's nothing that is impossible for you. We thank you that there's nothing that is too big for you. We thank you, O oh God, that even in our lives, there's no one and nothing that stands above you. You alone are the King of Kings. You alone are the Lord of Lords. No one, no one can take you away from your throne. No one. No one, O oh God, can intervene in the plan that you have for us. Your plan is a perfect plan. Your plan is good enough for us. It's the best thing that's ever happened to us. So God, we want to thank you for who you are, for the things that you do. My God, there's no one like you. You sit on the throne all by yourself. You command the angel armies. You command heaven. You command the earth. You command everything. The galaxies are yours. The oceans are yours. The mountains are yours. The rivers are yours, Lord. From the lion to the blue whale, they all listen and heed your command. No one else. 
We can go to and worship outside of you, ever sufficient one. Be blessed, be lifted high, be glorified. Be given the praise. The hills, the Bible says they jump, they leap in worship. The stars sing, they speak forth. Your glory and who you are. Let your fire reign this evening. Let your fire reign in our lives. Burn away at everything that doesn't belong. Burn away at everything that ought not to be there. Bless the name of Yeshua. There is no other God but Adonai. I bless you and I thank you for this time. I thank you for this session. I thank you for the people, O oh God, who are going to tune in. I thank you for this experience with you, O oh God, where we are able to just enjoy you, where we are able to just enjoy who you are, where we're able to just enjoy the things that you're about, the things that you're doing in our lives. Won't you just be praised? Won't you just be worshipped? Won't, won't you just be given the honor, the glory? Won't you, O oh God, just... Be given all of the praise, every single aspect of honor, every single aspect of praise. Just, just take it, oh God. We, we say that we are but sacrifices. We are but sacrifices, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you consume us. Thank you that God Almighty, you delight in what we have placed. Lord Father, that we are a pleasing aroma to you, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the things that you do. Thank you. Thank you for freedom this evening. Thank you for freedom this evening. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for the things that you do. God, we praise you and we worship you that you are able to do so much more than what we know. <laughs> You are able to meet us there at that place where we need you to meet us. And so God, this evening, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. Thank you for being God all by yourself. No one else is Lord. And so God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this moment. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, ever-sufficient one. Lord, where we've needed providence, you have given it. Where we've needed love, you have given it. Where we've needed comfort, you have given it. Lord, Father, yes, we may have complained about your will. We may have complained about things that are going on in our lives. We may have complained, my Father, about what you're doing. But where you are, there is peace. Where you are, there is love. Where you are, the fruit of the Spirit is evident. Where you are, there is freedom. Where you are, my God, there is everything that we need. And so, God, do what you want. Do what you want. Lord, Father, even in this session, even in this sermon, even in this service, oh God, we want to thank you that it is possible that you can heal. It is possible that you can touch. It is possible that you can provide. It is possible that you can mend things that are broken. It is possible, Lord Father, that you can speak to dead things. It is possible that, oh God, the trees of doubt, the weeds of self-doubt, the weeds, Lord Father, of impure thoughts and whatever else, Lord Father, can be cut down today. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. We're in the book of Genesis, beloved. We're in the book of Genesis. It is the book of uh, Genesis. If you were following the uh, posters, you'll realize that uh, we were in the first and the second chapter. Um, and tonight's message is really around now grow. If you want to follow with us, it's in the book of uh, Genesis. It's chapter number one. I want to just go there uh, just so that we'd be able to all follow if that's okay. Genesis chapter number one. I, I, I am led to believe that, uh, you know, so many people... Uh, say it, but but I am of the view that uh, tonight, tonight.
tonight is going to be is going to be something else. I I I, I am of the view that God is doing something uh, that I have not seen before, and 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 let Him do it. Hallelujah. The book of Genesis chapter number 1 verse 24, the Bible says, God said, let the earth bring forth each kind of living creature, each kind of livestock, crawling animal and wild beast. And that is how it was. I read that verse again. Genesis 1 24, God said, let the earth bring forth each kind of living creature, each kind of livestock, crawling animal and wild beast. And that is how it it was. And the second piece of scripture that we have today is found in the next chapter in Genesis chapter number two and verse seven. And the Bible says, then Adonai God formed a person from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, the breath of life rather, so that he became a living being. Then Adonai God formed a person from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, the breath rather, the breath of life, so that he became a living being. That is what the Bible tells us in Genesis 2, 7. And we were also in Genesis 1, where God says, and let the earth bring forth, let the earth bring forth animals, let the earth bring forth uh, vegetation, and then God forms a person from the dust of the ground. I just want to say very quickly, we've entered the new year and started with the planting season, and there's just a few things uh, that I want to bring across tonight to you, and thank you so much uh, for having tuned in. The first thing that I want to say uh, beloved, is that I want to pray against every kind of weed, every kind of weed that has grown and that has strangled our growth in the name of Yeshua. Every single weed, every single thing that was not supposed to grow in our lives, pride, lust, bad thought patterns, impatience, self-doubt, idolatry, wherever it is, that every single weed that's taken root in our lives, death prematurely, impatience, whatever it is, but every single root that has been allowed to be rooted, that has taken root, every single weed. I want to come against it and I want to pray against it tonight. If you will just please join me and that you will also just note what are the weeds that have grown in your family? What are the weeds that have grown in your life? Are they weeds of doubt? Are they weeds of lust? Are they weeds of pride? Are they weeds of self-doubt? Are they weeds of doubting God? And those are the weeds that tonight we've got to get rid of. We can't grow for as long as we are going to hold on to the weeds that are growing in our lives. We've got to be able to allow for God to take the tree, to take the tree of doubt that's been growing and uproot it. We've got to allow for God to take the tree of idolatry that's been growing and uproot it. We've got to allow for God to take the tree of unhealthy relationships and uproot them. We've got to allow for God to take the tree of people that are not meant to be there, things that are not meant to be there, thoughts that are not meant to be there that have taken root they've got to be uprooted so that we can grow and so tonight tonight we make a declaration of war on things that are not meant to be there on people on institutions on thought patterns that are not meant to be in our lives we declare war on that which God says is not good for us and because God has said it's not good for us, we say it's okay. We say we will go where you want us to go. And so this evening, every single weed, oh God, every single thistle, every single thorn, every single bad thing, Lord, every single deception, every single spirit that has come to whisper nonsense to us, Lord, Father, this evening we say no. In the mighty name of Yeshua, this evening, Lord, Father, we say no. We want to be at your feet. We want to listen to you and we want to listen to you only. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. The title for tonight is Now Grow. And I just have a few thoughts that I want to share with you and then I will be out of your hair. First thought that I have this evening is that the ground 
had seed and trees in it already. You will remember that the ground was called out of the waters. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter number one that the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep, right? The spirit of God was hovering over the waters that were covering the land. And the Bible tells us that God calls the land up out of the water. That's okay. God calls the land out of the water. Fine. Perhaps there's nothing fancy about that. But what we also realize is that the Bible tells us that God then said to the same land that was covered by water for it to produce vegetation. Come follow me for a little bit. The land produces vegetation in and of itself. So the land already had seeds. The land already had trees in and of itself. It didn't need the seed that was coming from outside. So when God says to the land, produce the fruit, produce the trees, produce the vegetation, the land listens to the creator and then it produces the vegetation. But not only that, follow me a little bit, beloved. It is the same land that then God says, produce animals. Every creeping thing, produce large animals and small animals alike that are land-based and they come up out of the land. And so the first thing that I just want to say to you tonight in telling you to grow is that you see after it is that God moshes the land out, he draws it out of the water. He actually calls it to gather together. And I want to tell you very quickly, my brother, my sister, there are grounds that God is calling out from the midst of the river, from the midst of the ocean of your tears. There are grounds that God is forming from the midst of the river and the ocean and the covering of the places where you've cried. God has counted every tear. God has acknowledged every tear. He's made sure that tonight he sent me to tell you that yes, it may have been that the land of promise that you were looking forward to, it may have been that the land of goodness and milk and honey that you were looking forward to was covered by the tears of disappointment, was covered by the tears of not knowing where to go, was covered by the tears of turmoil, was covered by the tears of not trusting God, was covered by the tears of not knowing how to move forward, but but I'm here to tell you tonight that God is calling that land out. He is making a place where the land of promise can come together. In the same way that he called the land together in Genesis 1, I'm here to tell you that yes, you have cried. Yes, it may have been painful. Yes, it's been a very raw deal that you have gone through. But God is calling the land of promise together. God is calling the land to come together. The tears must subside. We're here to declare that the tears must subside. The season for crying has come and gone. It is time for us to be able to be in the land that God has called us to. Yes, it is that it has been painful to cry. Yes, it is that it has been painful where we come from. But I'm here to tell you that from those tears, the land of promise is coming. From those tears, the land of goodness is coming. From those tears, the land of amazing things is coming. From those tears, the land of amazing is coming. What God wants to do in your life is not going to be stopped by the amount of tears you've cried. What God wants to do in your family is not going to be stopped by the number of pains and hurts that you've gone through. Because all of those tears, all of that water was actually going to nourish the land that was coming up underneath. It was nourishing the land. It was watering the land. The tears that you've cried are going to propel you to the next level and to the next place that God wants to bring across. Don't give up at the point where God is calling the land out. Don't give up at the place 
where God is saying that the land of promise must come out. Don't give up at the place where God is saying that your land of promise, that your land of healing, that your land of marriage, that your land of good things, that your land of children, that your land of beauty, that your land of financial freedom, that your land of peace, that your land, whatever it is that God is calling you to, that land he's speaking to you tonight and it is coming out. It has no choice, but it must come out. We're in the planting season. It must come out. We've cried enough. So therefore, the stability must be brought. The land must come out. The land that God has for us, the promised land that God has for us, it must come out. There is absolutely no way in which we are going to continue on and on crying, on and on in the river of tears, as though we do not have a God that cares for us. The Bible tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. We have come to the morning. We've come to the morning. My brother, my sister, you may have lost so much in your life, but God is calling dry land to appear. In this season of planting, God wants to put you on steady ground. Yes, everything looks watery because you've been crying for so long, but tonight he makes the dry land to appear. He makes the ground to appear, but the ground is not just there for its own sake it is there to be fruitful. It is there to be fruitful. Let's understand something about this ground. It already had seed. It already had trees in it. Don't mistake the fact that you can't see them for the fact that they're not there. There are some seeds, and I want to just say it tonight, that God has put inside of you that others may not see, that history may not see, that your own history says are not there, that you may have believed are no longer there. But I'm here to tell you, because God has said the land will appear. And not only is the land appearing, but the land is appearing pregnant. The land is appearing with seed. The land is appearing with trees. The land is appearing with promise. The land is appearing with healing. The land is appearing with freedom. The land is appearing with joy. The land is appearing with peace. I'm here to tell you that the devil may have convinced you that there is no land that is still left for you. But God has sent me to say to you that land will appear that land will appear and not only will it appear but it will appear bearing fruit it will appear having seed it will appear having done what it is that it needs to do the land will appear carrying what needs to be carried there are certain promises that can only come after a time of tears ah there are certain promises that can only be realized after a time of tribulation because the tears need to nourish the land so the seed that's been planted can germinate so the seed itself Thank you, Yeshua. The seed itself, the seed itself needed your tears. The seed itself needed you to go through what it is that you went through. It did not make sense at the time, but the seed that God has planted in you, the promised land that you are meant to come into has got to have a little bit of war before you get in there. You've got to cry a little bit before you get in there. You've got to have pain a little bit before you get in there. Because the land is carrying seed and your tears were watering that seed. There's something special about the land that God has called you to. This land of peace. This land of good things. This land of joy. This land of wellness. This land of righteousness. This land of walking in the purpose that God has for you. But you can't do it until there's been some tears. Until there's been some water. Until the Holy Spirit has hovered over the tears. You see, the Holy Spirit was present. My brother, my sister, the Holy Spirit was present. God was present when you were crying. God did not leave you when you were crying. God has not left you in the midst of the situation. Because tonight, he says, let the land appear. Tonight, he says, let the land come up. 
Now, question that I want to ask is, when last did you realize that you are pregnant with promise and you are pregnant with destiny? You yourself are the ground that has been called to being productive. So now, my brother, my sister, I am here to tell you to grow. I am here to tell you to allow the seeds of God to grow. I am here to tell you that perhaps there may be some seeds that are incredibly uncomfortable to carry. There may be some seeds that are incredibly uncomfortable for you to even bear. But because God has given you this promise, you have carried them thus far. No one believed you when you spoke the things that you spoke. No one understood you when you said the things that you did. Even today, you are still doubting what it is that God has told you. I'm here to tell you that the ground has been sufficiently shaken. The ground has been sufficiently nutrient uh, fed with the nutrients that are needed so that you so that you so that you can bear the seed that is meant to be born. So that you and your descendants can eat of the tree that God might have planted in a seed in grandfather's past. So that you can be able to lay a hold of the things that God wants you to lay a hold of. So that you you can be able to walk in the promises that God has for you and your family. But the growth is going to be uncomfortable. The growth is going to be uncomfortable because you see the seed needs to break the ground. The seed doesn't just come up. It needs to come up with its bud. It needs to grow. And so there are going to be displacements. There are going to be shifts in your heart. There are some things that have of necessity got to die because you are headed to a certain place. You may have been holding on to them for a long time. They may have been giving you comfort, but it's okay. My brother, my sister, if God can take it away, he's got better in store. Or he's got comfort for what he can take away because he gave it in the first place. I want to just also say that because you are called to being productive, if you don't believe me, please just let's check the Bible. In the second chapter, in the second chapter of Genesis, the Bible tells us, and God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Please let's understand that man was formed from productive ground. Thank you, Yeshua. Man was not formed from ground that was not productive. I'm here to tell you that the very thing that you were created of is productive by itself. Because this is the same ground, according to Genesis 1, that produced trees, that produced vegetation, that produced good things. You are productive in and of yourself. This is why Yeshua comes and says, I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. And he who dwells with me and lets my word dwell in them will be able to bear much fruit. This is why Paul writes that the fruit of the spirit spirit a love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control he says if you will abide in me you will bear much fruit he says fruitfulness is the portion to which we were all called to he says in the parable of the sower that some seed fell on good ground and then it gave a fruit of 30 fold and 60 fold and a hundred fold that there's something about man that's got to be fruitful. It's got to be fruitful. You were called to being fruitful. You were called to bearing fruit. You were called to fruitfulness. So grow. God, is form, God forms man out of the dust of the earth. And the Bible tells us he formed him out of the ground. The question, of course, has got to be asked, which ground? It's the same ground that was fruitful and multiplied and filled the earth with beautiful trees and vegetation. The ground listened 
to its creator. The Bible tells us you are ground, you are dust, and therefore listen to your creator when your creator calls a musician out of you. Listen to your creator when your creator calls a president out of you. Listen to your creator when he calls a husband or a wife out of you. Listen to your creator when he calls a parent out of you. Listen to your creator when he calls a business person out of you, when he calls a pastor out of you, when he calls a prophet out of you, when he calls a family uh, uh, uniter out of you, when he calls good things out of you because you were meant to be fruitful. But the ground listens to its creator. The ground listens to the one that calls it. And so it's important that you would understand that you are called to a particular kind of fruitfulness. You are called to being fruitful when only you are the ground that God can call. You will only be fruitful when God is able to call the seed that he has already planted in you to fruition. Otherwise, you won't be fruitful. There are certain things that you've been waiting for and you've been asking God for. And he is actually looking at you and waiting for you to actually get in alignment with him so that those things can happen. God is interested in seeing you fruitful and seeing you abundant. But the only way that abundance comes is when we are the kind of ground that God can call that abundance out of. If you are the kind of ground that's going to remain and do absolutely nothing and say you're waiting and say you're going to get it someday, then you are constantly going to be the ground that is chasing something that is already inside of you. You're going to pray prayers about external things that God has already planted internally in you. You're going to pray for providence. You're going to pray for wealth creation to things outside where God has given you business ideas internally and you refuse to mine the self. You refuse to mine the beautiful thing that is you. You refuse to allow for God to call the things that need to be called out of you. You have so internalized the world's version of you that you don't know that when you were born, there were seeds of wealth creation. There were seeds of peace. There were seeds of good marriage. There were seeds of children. There were seeds of good things that were planted inside of you. But no, you've managed to go and listen to the world. Now you've managed to go and listen to people who are telling you that you are not fruitful, who are telling you to go and seek something external where it's meant to be internal. You are ground and you are called to grow. You are called to grow. There's absolutely nothing about you that is meant to be barren, that is meant to be fruitless, that is meant to not produce. You are called to growing. Now grow. The Bible tells us that if this is the same land that was able to produce fruit, that was able to produce vegetation. And I am here to tell you that you are a multifaceted human being that can produce different things at different times. God has called you to being as creative as he is. He is the God that is able to tell the ground to grow fruit in this season. He is the God that is able to tell the ground grow vegetation in this season. There are opportunities, there are seeds that will only grow in particular seasons because that is the right season. In a certain season, people will see you as a certain kind of leader, but yet in another season, they will see you as a follower, but yet in another season, they'll see you as an establisher, but yet in another season, they'll see you as one who's profiting from what you have established, and yet in another season, they'll see you as a person who is able to give the baton to the next generation. It's because you are called to be fruitful and you are called to diversity even in your fruit. Do not let the church, do not let the world, do not let your pastor, do not let me tell you how fruitful you can be. Only God can do that. Only God can tell you how fruitful you can be. If God has not said this is enough, then it is not enough. Go and pursue even more and even more of what he has in store for you. The Bible says 
that he, by his word, was able to speak and the ground produced the trees that we see today and the ground produced the animals that we see today. What is preventing God from speaking over you and making sure that you are also able to provide for the very same things that are needed today? God can speak to you and there can be ideas that will generate income for decades to come. God can speak to you and there can be people who will arrive in your life and they will be the answer to prayers that you weren't even praying yet. God can speak to you and you can grow the things that are necessary in your life. My brother, my sister, tonight I'm here to tell you that the God that we serve is a God who is able the Bible says to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. My question is, when was the last time God did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could imagine? Are you at the place where you have so gotten used to God, where you have so gotten used to church that you don't believe that God could raise the dead, that you don't believe that God can heal, that you don't believe that God can provide, that you don't believe that God could do something absolutely amazing that would blow you away? When was the last time where God actually blew your mind? Because you are ground that has allowed for the weeds of doubt. You have allowed for the weeds of insecurity. You have allowed for the weeds of human beings. You have allowed for the weeds of nothingness to occupy the space of the trees of miracles that God has in store for you. There are spaces in your heart that are meant to be occupied by trees of business, that are meant to be occupied by trees of marriage, that are meant to be occupied by trees of being a good family person, by trees of good things, but instead they are occupied by weeds of doubt. They are occupied by weeds of words that were spoken long, long ago. Allow for God tonight to uproot that which needs to be uprooted. Allow for God tonight to tell you to grow. To tell you that it is important that you grow. That absolutely nothing can happen until you decide to plant yourself in the hands of the husbandman. To plant yourself in the hands of a God who knows how to make things grow. Who calls growth forward by his word he speaks to you his word is not the problem him speaking is not the problem the problem is the ground that he speaks to god has been calling you to do a certain thing god has been calling you to be a certain way god has been calling you to do certain things to meet with certain people to draw up certain proposals to go to a specific church to go and pray for certain people but because you have turned yourself deaf you have turned yourself deaf to the things that God wants you to do. And so now you are telling us that you are not productive. You are telling us that you are not fruitful. No, you are not listening. We are not listening. God is calling us to fruitfulness and we are content with mediocrity. We are not listening. God is calling us to excellence and abundance and we are content with poverty. We are not listening. God is calling us to beautiful things, to great things, to multi-generational things, but we will not do the work. Tonight, may God rid us of laziness. May God remove the fog from our eyes. Tonight, may God remove the wax from our ears. May God, if we have shriveled hands, may he cause them to be straight. If we have shriveled feet, may he cause those feet to be straight. That we will hear, that we will see, that we will smell, that we will touch, that we will grope, and we will go where God wants us to go. We will lay a hold of what God says to us to do. Our God is calling us to fruitfulness. Our God is calling us to being better. Our God is calling us to not worry about the things that we worry about. Our God is calling us to trust. Our God is calling us 
to being better. There is something about you that wants to be better that wants to flourish, that wants to thrive, that hears Yeshua say, I have come that you might have life and life in abundance, but it is work to get to abundance. It is in listening to what God says. I don't see anywhere in the scripture where the ground goes and consults with the water or consults with the air and says, okay, you know what? Uh, uh, God has called me to being fruitful, but I just want to see uh, air. Are you also fruitful? Is it okay if I'm fruitful? Or you know, water, what's going on? Are you okay? What? No, no. The ground is fruitful when God wants it to be fruitful. The ground does what God wants it to do when God wants it to be done. It doesn't inquire. There is no opinion. There is no counsel that the ground seeks. Because when God says to do, you do. You don't ask. May God bless us. May God keep us. May God shine his face upon us. And give us such awesome rest that we would find out exactly where he has called us to be. I just want to pray with uh, people now who say they want to grow. And people who are saying, God, I'm prepared to do what it takes to grow. That's it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being hectic. I know the only thing that I'd like for us to actually proclaim is I am growing. That's it. If, if, if we will type it, if you will share it as a status, if you, whatever it is that the Lord lays, but if you will just actually proclaim to yourself in the same way that God proclaims to you, and you will just write it in that comment section that we have, I am going to grow. I am growing. I am growing. I am expanding. I am being better. I am being excellent. I will grow. I am growing. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. I want to give you the glory for who you are. Oh my God, there is no one else like you. I want to thank you that God Almighty, some of us have been crying for more. We've been wanting more. We've been wanting things to happen, my father. But we realize that the issue has actually been with us. The issue, my God, has not been with you. The issue has not been with your promises. The issue has not been with your word. The issue has not been with you, but the issue has been with us. We, Heavenly Father, have decided to limit you. We have decided to say that you can't do this in our lives. We have decided that you are going to end at a specific point in our lives and that you can't go beyond that. Tonight, my Father, I want to come against discouragement. I want to come against things that have told us that we are not good enough for the kind of growth that you want for us. I want to come against thought patterns that have told us that we will never amount to the promises that you have in store for us. I want to come against things, my God, that are saying to us that we will never reach the promises that you have in store, not only for us, but for our families. I want to come against the weeds and the trees, my Father, that have said to us for generations that we only end at a specific point. My God, my God, Adonai, tonight, tonight, my Father, make us increasingly frustrated with the fact of mediocrity 
anywhere in our lives, anywhere where we've made excuses and we were meant to be excellent. Tonight we repent. Tonight we repent. Tonight we repent. We say no to any kind of mediocre spirit. We say no to any kind of lackluster motivation. Tonight, my God, we seek you and we seek more than what we've seen before. We say yes to what you say yes to. We say no to the spirit of doubt that may have been in our families for years and generations. My father, my father, tonight we say yes. Tonight we say yes. We agree with you. We agree with your purpose. We agree with your plan. We agree with what you're doing. We agree with where you're taking us. We refuse, my God, to miss out on the promises that you gave to our fathers and to our forefathers. So tonight, my God, we say no to mediocrity. We say no to lackluster motivations. We say no to anything, my God, that doesn't want us to pursue you. Today, we say we want to move when you say move. We want to grow when you say grow. We want to go when you say go. We want to stop when you say stop. Our hearts are ready to grow. Our spirits are ready to grow. We demand growth of ourselves. Tonight, we demand growth of ourselves. We demand discipline of ourselves. We demand good things of ourselves. Tonight, we shy away from being immature little brats that are not going to be able to handle what you want us to do. We shy away from being spoiled children that will not listen to the Father. We shy away from being spoiled little people that don't want to pursue you. Tonight, we dedicate a fresh that we will go where you go. We will move where you move. God, have your way. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray.